What is up guys? Welcome back for our very first GPC match. I probably shouldn't say welcome back because this is the first time you're here for this. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, be sure to check out uh, the rest of my content if you get a chance. Be very greatly appreciated. Leave a comment for me and a like down below uh, if you enjoyed this video. But let's get right into it. Uh, this week, uh, week four, because Rob already completed th three weeks for us uh, as the Austin Toros before we took over as the Montreal Hapsols, of course. Uh, this week we are taking on Iron Flash Gaming, aka Anthony, coach of the Detroit Butterfreeze. And my opponent has a relatively threatening team, I would say. He, it's, it's very Joey-esque. Uh, jo uh, Joey is in um, Pokemon MD. Uh, the, the kind of teams that he likes to draft. I'll just go over his team really quickly. You'll see it come up on the right. It's made up of Thunderous Incarnate, Garchomp, Reuniclus, Mega Blastoise, Snorlax, Acelgore, Drapion, Verizion, Drapion and Verizion, <laughs> Escavalier, Golurk, and Ursaring. So I had to devise a team to not lose to all of his offensive threats, being Thunderous Incarnate, Garchomp, Reuniclus, Mega Blastoise, uh, Verizion and potentially even a Scavalier. Uh, and Ursaring was a hidden gem, uh, as you guys will see a little bit later. But uh, basically, I went into this uh, thinking all right, well, I have to uh, wear down his team slowly. Uh, I can't go rushing into things and go full offense. I have to bring some defensive Pokemon. Even though I've been so used to having a very offensive team in the NBA, I have to back off a little bit because the team that Rob left us. Uh, it's a nice balance. It's a nice bulky offense, so we're gonna work with that. Uh, the order that we're going in, going in right now is uh, from least interesting set to most interesting, as you guys will see in a second. Uh, let's start off with Tweety or Zapdos. Tweety, nickname cur courtesy of Mega Mogwai. Uh, if I haven't mentioned that in the uh, draft review video, then here you go. Um, so we have Volt Switch, Hidden Power Ice, Heat Wave, and Roost. So very, very standard set. Normally Zapdos does run Thunderbolt over Volt Switch against Anthony's team, I needed something that could get me out against threats like Reuniclus and Snorlax and allow me to go into something that could actually effectively uh, deal with them. So I brought Volt Switch um, because I wanted initiative on my opponent's team. You'll see that in our next Pokemon as well. But Volt Switch is there for, for exactly that reason. Hidden Power Ice, of course, able to hit the Golurk, the Garchomp, uh, the Thunderous Incarnate, and the Verizion for super effective damage. However, Heat Wave is a little bit better than uh, Hidden Power Ice against the Verizion. It's also there to help me hit the uh, Scavalier, which is more than likely coming. Also hits the Acelgore really nicely, so... Uh, that's pretty much the, the moveset. Roost, of course, for longevity. And we're rocking uh, Leftovers and Static. Static because we're not rocking Defog this week. Uh, he's also got a couple of very uh, potent physical threats, uh, mainly Garchomp and uh, Snorlax, uh, and as well Verizion. So if I can paralyze any one of those Pokemon, that's awesome. Uh, Golurk as well as a physical threat and a Scavalier, so that'd be cool. Uh, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for Tweety. We're going to try to move this along quickly because I have a battle to cover. We're doing both in one episode, so here you go, guys. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Minxiao, Rob. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to uh, let you guys know, if you want to skip this team builder portion and you want to go straight to the battle, uh, there will be a timestamp in either the comment section or in the description, more than likely the, the description, uh, and you guys can forward straight to it, so uh, you'll know where to go if you just want to see the battle. Uh, this is just a plain review of the team, but as you can see, we're bringing Rob Choice Scarf this week. Uh, high Jump, Kick, U-Turn, Knock Off, and Stone Edge. It's a very, very standard Scarf set, uh, but it hits my opponent's team very well. High Jump Kick, there's only one real resist on his team, uh, and that is the Reuniclus. Uh, Thunderous Eye, I don't consider a resist to a Reckless Choice Scarf High Jump Kick from Mean Shao. It's got a lot of attack. Uh, it's coming off very powerfully, so it's basically a neutral base uh, 90 attack, uh, if you look at it in, in that way. Um... Well, actually, even higher than that's like 97. But anyway, uh, against Thunderous Eye because of uh, the resist, but it's it's still an extremely strong move. So uh, there's also a Ghost type on his team, being Golurk. So we have to watch out for when we click High Jump Kick. U-turn, uh, of course, for initiative. It creates an amazing pairing with Zapdos. Allows me to gain so much initiative on my opponent's team. Knockoff is there to uh, basically to not lock myself into High Jump Kick at certain moments in the game. Uh, because I want to be able to hit the Reuniclus on the switch, and I also want to be able to knock off a couple of items throughout the game. Uh, if I'm able to get rid of Snorlax's leftovers, that's great. 
uh, as well as uh, maybe a uh, an Aselgor Sash if he decides to switch it in, uh, Verizion's Leftovers, uh, if he's a sub, uh, sub Swords Dance variant, uh, Scavalier's Assault Vest, anything like that. It's really, really nice, and it also allows me to hit the Golurk, which I normally wouldn't be able to otherwise. And finally, Stone Edge is there because I need super effective coverage for the Thunderous Eye. If I haven't said this yet, Thunderous Eye is one of the biggest threats to my team. If I don't see this at Team Preview, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable because that thing just runs through me. Uh, I didn't explain the, um, the EVs here on Zapdos, I'll just go over that really quickly. Uh, 248 in HP to be able to live for Stealth Rock Switchins, obviously. Uh, most amount of HP possible. The 24 uh, Calm Nature over here is to be able to take uh, Thunderous's uh, Thunderbolt to be able to uh, dodge a two-hit KO after leftovers. Uh, I think 75% of the time. So, he has a very, very low chance of two-hit KOing us with that Life Orb Thunderbolt. If he's not Life Orb, then we're, we're, we're okay. Uh, and finally, 80 in speed. This is enough speed to outspeed uh, Mega Blastoise if he's max speed modest. Uh, and I pour, put the rest into physical defense because this is going to be our main check to Garchomp, as it doesn't have a very strong way of hitting us outside of a uh, an inaccurate Stone Edge. So, that's uh, the EVs there. Uh, mean Shells are pretty straightforward. I have 232 in speed because this is just enough to outspeed uh, Choice Scarf Garchomp, which is his fastest Scarfer, except maybe Thunderous Eye or Virizion which I don't see coming Scarf because either one of those Pokemon locking themselves into a move is not good for my opponent. If he locks himself into close combat with Verizion, that gives my Gardevoir a free switch, and if he locks himself into an Electric-type move with Thunderous Eye, then that gives my Crocodile a free switch. So I'm pretty much expecting Garchomp to be the only potential Scarfer on my opponent's team. That's why I decided to run 334 speed. Uh, over going for anything higher. Either way, I wouldn't outspeed the Verizion or the Thunderous uh, with the um, with the increased speed if I put the last 24 in there, or 20, 20 uh, points rather. Uh, so I decided to put it in HP just in case I can live a hit. Uh, even if on 1 HP, that's amazing. That keeps Mean Chao around for later in the game. Next up, we have Shades. Now, this is where the sets start to get a little bit interesting. We have a Choppleberry Crocodile with Intimidate. Max attack, adamant, 216 HP, 40 in speed. Uh, the 40 in speed is enough to outspeed uh, max speed Golurk if he's adamant. Uh, if he decides to run a choice band that adamant set, we can outspeed it and uh, kill it with a knockoff or come very close. Just a little bit of prior damage from perhaps spikes or rocks would do the trick. Uh, Earthquake is uh, our main stab, able to hit a, a large portion of his team. Uh, it's good for the uh, Scavalier, things like that. Uh, I decided to go with Aerial Ace because uh, I wanted to catch the Verizion potentially. Uh, this also allows me to hit the uh, Acelagor for super effective damage, even though Knockoff is technically stronger if he has an item. Uh, and it also uh, it ba basically just um, is able to Oko. With the Adamant Nature, it's able to Oko the Verizion almost no matter what set, uh, unless he's rocking max HP, max defense. Uh, or a Koba Berry. That's the only way he would be able to live the Aerial Ace. So that's why that's there. And of course, cu coupled with the Choppa Berry, I'm able to live even a, a banded close combat from Verizion and knock it out. Verizion is a huge issue to my team because it gets, gets coverage for literally everything I have, um, except maybe Yuxi. Yuxi is the only thing that can resist uh, or take on, rather, any one of its hits. So that's, uh, I, I kind of tailored this to be able to uh, lure in the Verizion and have it attack me and then just knock it out. And finally, we're rocking Stealth Rocks. I was initially going to go with a Fire Fang uh, on this set to be able to hit the uh, the Scavalier as well, but I figured the Scavalier wouldn't want to come in on me anyway. It would probably be his dedicated uh, wall to either uh, Gardevoir, uh, outside of HP Fire, of course, or even uh, it's a pretty good response to Klefki, because even if Klefki paralyzes it, it's not a big deal, it's slow already, so uh, I figured that he wouldn't want to switch in as a Scavalier into my Crocodile. Decided to pop on Aerial Ace instead, figured it would be uh, a good way to trap Verizion and, uh, or lure it rather, and knock it out, so that's that. Next up, this set is, uh, this set I'm really proud of, actually. It's a uh, Calm Mind, Hyper Voice, Hidden Power Fire, and Wish set. As you can see, my opponents only resist on his team to a Hyper Voice is a Scavalier. So we can hit it with HP Fire. If it's an Assault Vest set, we have a chance to knock it out after the Hyper Voice with an HP Fire. If he's Assault Vest and he's max HP, max special defense, we cannot. So that's, that's why that's... 
I'm, ro I'm rocking Modest, uh, and even that, you'd expect an HP fire from a Modest Gardevoir. After a Hyper Voice to knock out a Scavalier, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't, so... Uh, and finally, we're running Wish and Calm Mind. Why did I decide to go with Wish and Calm Mind? Well, uh, the Reuniclus is a very likely bring from my opponent. Uh, more than likely a Cold Burst set to be able to take a hit from the uh, Crocodile and knock it back out. And then I don't have a great response to it if it's already set up. Uh, you guys will see what my response is in a second. But Calm Mind is also a very, very good way to take on uh, Reuniclus because basically we're, when we're Calm Minding up alongside each other, our super effective moves or best moves to hit each other with being Hyper Voice and Shadow Ball, uh, each um, don't increase in damage if we keep going up by the same amount of Calm Minds. And my Hyper Voice does more to him than his Shadow Ball does to me. Couple that with the fact that I have Wish and I'm able to hit him every second turn after he recovers, forces him into a, a recovering position, and yes, you can say that he has a higher likelihood of perhaps getting drops with Shadow Ball, but this is just the best tailored set that I could get. Also, um, if Garchomp is gone, or if any of his faster physical Pokemon are gone, which really is only Garchomp and Virizion, if either one of those that he brings are gone from the game, and I set up with uh, Gardevoir and I manage to knock out the uh, the Reuniclus in front of me, then Gardevoir pretty much just sweeps because it's faster than everything else and it can take any special hit coming off of, say, Thunderous Eye. Uh, it can take a Sludge Wave like nothing. Uh, it can even take... Um, it can't take Drapion's uh, Poison Jab too well, and Drapion, because of the fact that we're modest, has a chance to outspeed us if he max, uh, maxes it out in speed. I'm gonna have to scout for that, obviously, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll do with what we have. Uh, but this is the best set I could come up with. I really, really like it, and hopefully it works out. We'll see when we get to the game. Next we have uh, J Cream's 14, <laughs> our Blastoise, uh, rocking a really, really cool set. Uh, I'm running Ice Beam, Rapid Spin, Mirror Coat, and Haze. Why am I running this set? Because... One Thunderous Eye doesn't knock me out straight away with a Thunderbolt. If I find out that he's not a nasty plot variant, uh, I can come, on, uh, come in on him, threaten him with an Ice Beam. He might think that he knocks us out. He doesn't. He comes very close, but we're able to Mirror Coat and knock him back out. So that's really, really cool. Also, we can catch Volt Switches from his uh, Thunderous Eye, able to take it about 40 to 50% from it, and then uh, fire back a Mirror Coat on whatever else wants to come in, effectively knocking it out because we have such a high HP stat. Uh, and Rapid Spin is there to remove any potential hazards. He does have a Spike Setter in a uh, Selgor, and a few Rock Setters being Garchomp, uh, Golurk, uh, I believe there's one more, perhaps, I might be wrong, no, there aren't any more, so that's pretty much it. I just don't want him Spike Stacking me, uh, that would be very, very bad for Mean Xiao and for uh, Mega Gardevoir. Mean Xiao is not Regenerator this week, so we have to be careful with that. I needed the Rapid Spin. I know he has a Golurk, that's why we have Ice Beam to be able to hit that thing. And as you can see, our last move here is Haze. Why are we running Haze? Because we are naturally faster than Reuniclus, and if I allow that thing to get up to plus six, plus six, and get a knockout, I can just come in with Blastoise and Haze it. And all its boosts are gone. He has to rework that all the way from the back. Uh, it's very difficult for him, and I can just go into Crook. If it's still alive, of course, and knock out, knock off into knock off from Mean Xiao should be able to do the trick, or even Hyper Voice from Mega Gardevoir. And next and finally, probably the I want to say best set that I've ever come up with for a Clef Key. Uh, it's it doesn't look too uh, intricate, but let me explain. So I tested with Johnny uh, for this game, and the implications of heal block are extremely important. Why? Because my opponent has a, a Snorlax that he is more than likely not bringing immunity on because I have an Entei. If anything, he's bringing that as his check to uh, Banded Entei's Sacred Fire being able to take the hit because he's thick fat. So I can Toxic his Snorlax. I can allow him to set up a couple of curses think that he can rest on me and heal block him and knock him out with the toxic damage on the following turn, which is extremely clutch. Dazzling Gleam is there, of course, for the Garchomp, uh, to, just to be able to get off general damage. It hits the Virizion for super effective damage as well. Doesn't hit the Escavalier, but that's fine. Spikes are there because they are, uh, once again, extremely effective against my opponent's team. Uh, they hit the Ursaring, which constantly takes toxic damage if it's running a Guts or a uh, Quick Feet set. 
Uh, Galark takes damage, Escavalier takes damage, so does Virizion, Drapion, Selgor, Snorlax, Blastoise, Reuniclus, and Garchomp. Well, not Reuniclus if he's Magic Guard, of course, but Garchomp. So basically, he only has two potential immunities to the spikes on his team, being Thunderous and Reuniclus. Uh, that being said, we can get off a lot of damage with just spikes from Klefki. They are extremely clutch. And once again, Toxic is there because I want to be able to hit... Uh, Johnny actually suggested a switcheroo set with potentially a Scarf or a Toxic Orb, which I had already thought of. Uh, and I decided, you know what, I think Toxic plus Heal Block is better because not only does it allow me to, um, to cripple and potentially knock out the Snorlax, but it also allows me to stop Reuniclus from recovering if it's set up. So... That's that's very very important to me. I want to make sure that my opponent cannot heal up his Pokemon. Uh, I might get ca caught off guard by a potential rest set, but if I can effectively neutralize, to me, what are two of the biggest threats on my opponent's team being Reuniclus and Snorlax. I know how powerful uh, Snorlax can be. Uh, then that's great. If Klefki can do that uh, that job, jumbled mess. I'm looking for you to come through. Uh, and yeah, so that's that pretty much wraps up the team builder guys should be about 17 minutes in you guys are now getting the battle not 17 16 so about at uh, 1620 that should be where I'm leaving the uh, uh, The timestamp in the description or in the comments again. I'm not sure where yet, but uh, Definitely uh, stick around because we are about to review our battle right now All right guys, and we are back here we go, uh, game against, so his, his name on showdown is Purple Raven 24 his actual name is Anthony, and uh, Iron Flash Gaming, so here we go, we got uh, team preview, so right off the bat, I see a Scavalier, Blastoise, Golurk, uh, Garchomp, uh, Ursaring, and of course, Reuniclus. So, a couple of big threats that didn't show up to this game, mainly Snorlax and Thunderous Incarnate, which I was so happy not to see. Immediately when this battle started, I was like, yes! No Thunderous. I already knew what the Earth Ring was going to be thanks to Johnny. Uh, I had a pretty good feeling that the Escavalier was AV to take on uh, Gardevoir. And I also uh, clearly forgot that uh, Blastoise was a Mega during this game. You guys will see that. Uh, or you may not, actually. It depends. I'm going to put this on slow so I can really give you guys a play-by-play -play because this is probably one of the best battles that I have ever had in my life. Uh, and you guys will see why. So, let's get into it. Right away, lead matchup. We have Mean Shout versus his... Uh, Earth Ring. So, I'm thinking, alright, he's just gonna protect, I'm not going for high jump kick, and he protects, of course. Get his toxic boost right away, uh, not toxic boost, but rather his quick feet, which I knew he would be, and I also know from Calking prior to this game, that Mean Xiao even, uh, still outspeeds quick feet Earth Ring, no matter what, uh, with the speed investment that we have. So, I'm gonna U-turn out, I'm gonna go into my Intimidator, which is Crocodile. Now, Crocodile, I don't see the Verizion, so Crocodile doesn't do as well this game. It's still good for the Reuniclus and the Golurk, but it's alright. I still need to take a hit from this Earth Ring at some point, so I go into Crook, able to take that. Because we are Choppel, we will be able to take the following close combat. So I stay in here just to get up rocks, forgetting that he has a Blastoise, of course, and uh, he next names his Pokemon, I guess, after super effective moves that hit them. Uh, which is fun. Uh, he's going to Mega Evolve right here. I expected him to Rapid Spin, so I just go for an Earthquake on this turn. Uh, I'm able to get off 32%. I see that this thing has a lot of physical bulk to it because of that Earthquake damage. It should have done a lot more than that uh, because we are Max Attack Adamant, of course. So I'm going to switch out here, expecting a Scald on the following turn to knock me out. I'm going to go into Zapdos. He's going to Scald. We're able to take that very well because of our investment. Luckily, he does not get the burn. Zapdos ends up being a very, very important Pokemon in this game. You'll see that a little bit later. But had it gotten burned right here, it would not have been as useful. I'm going to go for the Volt Switch on this turn. Kind of obvious play. He goes into Golurk. Uh, obviously able to uh, eat up the Volt Switch. He's immune. And now I want to gauge the damage from my Hidden Power Ice. Um, so I'm just going to fire that off. And we will see on this turn that Golurk is actually uh, Salt Vested. It takes this super well. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe the Escavalier is not a Salt Vest. Would he really run two? Here he's going to Thunder Punch me, and we actually get the static on the first turn, which was great. I expect him to Earthquake here, predicting my Roost, so I'm going to switch out into Crocodile, uh, and he actually makes a better play, his best play, uh, in my opinion, uh, which was actually just to go for the Ice Punch. He had the chance to freeze, even if I Roosted, he got off damage. He's able to knock out Crook right here. We do have the minus one on him, which is really nice, as now I can just go back into my Mean Shao, threaten him with a knockoff, but he knows that's coming, so I'm going to U-turn instead as he brings in his Blastoise. 
uh, and we are able to U-turn out of there and bring Zapdos back in to threaten this thing. Now, from that range, Volt Switch is a roll. I believe that it's a very high roll that I need to knock this thing out. But it's fine. Any kind of damage on this is good. I actually do not go into Zapdos. I go into Gardevoir because Gardevoir can guaranteed knock this out. And because of the damage that we calced earlier, we know that he's defensive. He does not have speed investment. He doesn't outspeed us right now. He goes into his Cavalier. Like I said before, he names his Pokemon after super effective moves on them. Uh, I go for Hyper Voice, and I'm going to just pause it right here, guys, because this is a very important turn. Uh, I go for Hyper Voice, and I look at the damage, and... As I said before in the team builder, if you if you skip that part, then that's okay. But I said that if he was max HP, max special defense, assault vested, he could take Hyper Voice into Hidden Power Fire, no problem. And from this damage from Hyper Voice, from a modest, pixelate boosted Gardevoir, Mega Gardevoir, this is max HP, max special defense, AV like there's no other way he takes this this well, so I'm gonna just continue here He's actually gonna go for a pursuit on this turn as I'm switching out He knew that I wouldn't stay in to take an iron head He also knew that I would calc and find out that HP fire would not be able to, th to knock him out So he stays in very good play on Anthony's part. He's gonna go for a, a pursuit to weaken me. That's great I'm gonna go just go out straight into my Zapdos, immediately threaten this with a Heat Wave, which is a little bit stronger than HP Fire. Obviously, it's not coming off of as much special attack, but it's fine. We're just gonna throw it off here. He goes into his best response to, my, to our Zapdos, being his Galark. Uh, he's just going to eat up this, uh, this Heat Wave, which actually does about the same amount of damage as HP Ice, which was curious to me. Uh, because uh, HP Ice obviously hits for 120, whereas Heat Wave hits for 80 uh, or 90, I think. But anyway, uh, gonna HP Ice right here as he actually gets fully parried on this turn. Uh, and we are able to hit him with another HP Ice. I know that if I get this Galark out of the way, Zapdos puts in so much more work on my opponent's team. Like, I can just Volt Switch around. If he brings in Garchomp, I can H HP Ice it. Like, it's, it's so effective now. He's gonna go for an Ice Punch. And once again, I'm fearing that he's going to predict me to Roost and go for an Earthquake. So instead of actually just roosting, I'm going to play it safe and just click Hidden Power Ice here. As he brings in his Reuniclus, I don't calc the damage immediately on the HP Ice because it's kind of uh, iffy to calc that. Uh, as we're going to see that his Reuniclus actually does not have leftovers on it. Uh, so we're going to Volt Switch out. At this point, I'm thinking Colbert. It's Colbert. It's probably Colbert for, uh, for Crocodile. So I'm going to Volt out. And I'm going to go into Klefki. Now, what Klefki does for me is, as I said before, it gets up a bunch of spikes. He's going to go for a Calm Mind. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And for some reason, I'm not exactly sure why, he decides to switch out here. I'm going to ask him about this later because I'm recording this uh, much earlier in the week right now. But for some reason, Anthony switches out here. I don't know if he didn't have anything at all to hit me with or if he was afraid of a trick uh, and would have gotten a Scarfed or what that play was, but Klefki did not threaten his uh, Reuniclus at all at that moment. I'm just going to go for a layer of spike here, knowing very, very well that I have Blastoise in the back to be able to haze away his boosts. So I'm like, okay, this is fine. I'm going to Toxic this Blastoise. Here comes a huge t uh, series of plays uh, of exchanges. He goes for Scald, he gets the burn. So this is extremely important. Klefki is going to be getting worn down a lot quicker and almost as fast as his Blastoise is because he can just repeatedly Scald me. Uh, I'm just going to go for, uh, I believe, a Dazzling, Glim, uh, Dazzling Gleam excuse me, right here to weaken him and put him in range of two more rounds of Toxic. Now, here is a very, very important play, guys. So, he's leaving in his Blastoise. I'm thinking, okay, he's just sacking this. He just wants to make sure that I don't get up spikes. He's just going to go for a Rapid Spin here uh, and let his Blastoise go down. Follow it up by going into either uh, Garchomp or a Scavalier to knock me out or even Ursaring before the spike goes up so that he can conserve his health because he's very low right now thanks to the U-turn plus Toxic. So I'm thinking, all right, this is fine. Uh, we're just going to set up, uh, I believe, another layer of spike right here. So I'm going to go for the spike and he actually rests on this turn. So had I gone for the heal block, his Blastoise would have been gone, eliminated from the game. But this actually comes into play because he doesn't know that I have heal block yet. So here on this turn, I'm going to switch out uh, into Zapdos, I believe, so that I can get the Volt Switch off on his uh, on his Blastoise. 
uh, while it stays asleep if he decides to stay in. I'd rather not risk a sleep talk. Actually, again, I go into Mega Gardevoir directly and not into Zapdos. This threatens anything that's in, including his Mega Blastoise. He decides to sack off Golurk. This is very, very crucial. Right here, I'm gonna go for the Wish. So I can pass this Wish off into whatever I choose. If he goes into a, a Scavalier, I might just hit him because I don't want to switch out on a Pursuit again because I'm going to die. He brings in Garchomp. I'm figuring this thing is offensive. It has to be. He wouldn't bring a defensive Garchomp when I have a Mega Gardevoir. So I pass this Wish off into our Zapdos. He goes through the Iron Head. We don't get the Static, but he, he does reveal to be Life Orb. This Wish is going to pass absolutely no health back to Tweety because Tweety's HP is way higher than Gardevoir, but it puts it at a good amount actually. I'm going to switch out here, and I'm going to go into Blastoise, expecting a Stone Edge, because Stone Edge actually kills from that range, because we're not that defensive. He actually goes for a Draco, and he gets a crit right here. This is actually okay, because it revealed to me that he had Draco without Zapdos taking damage, and also, this still forces a switch, because he, he can't knock me out right here with anything. So, he's going to switch out. He's going to go into his Reuniclus, uh, and I'm actually going to pull a double, expecting him to switch out and not stay in on a potential Ice Beam, and here is where I go into Zapdos. So, he had lowered uh, special attack. If he had Stone Edge, he would have gone for it, right? More than likely on Zapdos to knock it out, because if I'm specially defensive, then his Draco doesn't knock me out from the range I'm at. So, I'm expecting him to, uh, to click Stone Edge. He doesn't, so I can pretty much freely switch back into Zapdos, because he's minus two now. So, I do that. Uh, I'm going to Volt Switch out on this Reuniclus, always getting back a little bit of health, uh, health with Zapdos' leftovers. We're going to switch out into... Uh, Mega Gardevoir because I'm under the impression that this thing can't touch me at this point because I'm thinking Basically this Reuniclus has shown Calm Mind and Recover. It hasn't shown an offensive move yet I don't know what it's rocking, but for example if it was running Psy Shock and Shadow Ball It wouldn't be able to touch Crook at all and I could freely pursue trap it. so What's wh like what is what are his two offensive moves? At this point, I'm thinking, okay, he's either got Shadow Wall and Focus Blast, or he has Focus Blast and Psy Shock. In which case, he cannot touch Gardevoir, if it's the latter. So, I bring in Gardevoir, as he goes for a recover, and this, again, is pretty much a free kill. Escavalier comes in. Klefki Spike comes into play here, because without that spike, I'll tell you right now, this Hyper Voice into HP Fire might not have killed, but because of the spike, the minimum roll is actually 52%. So I'm able to take out his Escavalier. Like I said, I calc'd for max special defense AV. We're able to knock it out. That's fine. Now Ursaring is going to come in. I don't know if you guys saw the thumbnail, but that moment's about to come up right here. So I decide, let's just sack off Blastoise. It's not doing anything else this game. This uh, Reuniclus doesn't seem to have anything for my Gardevoir, so I can set up alongside it. We can get rid of uh, Blastoise, and we should be fine for the rest of the game. I'm going to go to Mean Shao. And I calc this. Knock off does 40 to 48%. He's at 42. So if I get a low roll, he doesn't get knocked out. But in my head, I'm thinking, all right, well, this Ursa Ring's going down, or he's losing an item on him on, or he's taking unnecessary damage on something like Blastoise, which is always good. So I go into Mean Shao, and I'm going to knock off. He can't protect. I probably should have gone for high jump kick, but I wanted to catch the Reuniclus. And as you can see, his Earth Ring lives on one HP and is able to knock me out with a facade. And I was uh, not furious. I wouldn't say furious, but I was uh, shaking at this point because I thought I had just lost my win con. My win con was gone. I was just going to spam high jump kick on everything and everything was going to die. So he goes into Garchomp. I go into my safest switch, which is Zapdos, of course, and handles pretty much anything that he wants to bring out. Uh, Garchomp's Draco is very powerful, so I'm going to, I believe, uh, Hidden Power Ice on this turn, because it can't knock me out. I calc this. It cannot knock me out from where I'm at. He goes into Reuniclus on the HP Ice. He's allowing me to gain back more leftovers. I can Volt Switch out again. Again, I, I'm under the impression that this Reuniclus cannot touch my Gardevoir. So I'm going to Volt Switch out, and this time I'm actually going to... Uh, go out into Klefki, I believe, right here, as I do. I go into Klefki as my opponent sets up a Calm Mind. Now, this is a misplay because... Uh, sorry about that. This is a misplay because Gardevoir's Hyper Voice still kills after a Calm Mind. I don't even need to Calm Mind up. I knock him out because I've been calcing the damage that his Reuniclus has been taking for the whole game. So I know that he has no special defense investment. He will not be able to take a Hyper Voice from this range. I should have gone into Gardevoir if my gut feeling was that he didn't have anything to hit me with because then I get a guaranteed kill. 
but instead I go into Klefki, and I haven't showed Heal Block yet. I'm going to use it right here. I'm going to prevent this Reuniclus from healing up by going for Heal Block, and again, once again, Anthony is going to switch out on my Klefki. So I'm thinking, what does he have as coverage to hit me? Because if he has Focus Blast, it can knock me out from here at plus one. What is he doing? Like, why is he switching out? I still don't know. I still have to ask him. But anyway, uh, Klefki is going to go for another spike right here. And this is where heal blocking this thing earlier would have been amazing. <laughs> because I really, really thought that he wouldn't bring Scald and Rapid Spin as his only offensive moves. But it turns out that he is indeed a Sleep Talk variant. He hasn't killed off a turn of sleep yet. Uh, but he is going to sleep talk right here. Luckily for me, he gets rest on this first turn. So I get a little bit greedy here, thinking, yeah, he's going to get rapid spin of rest. He's not going to hit me. I'm just going to go for a wish, get back all my health on the following turn, and be able to knock something out with a hyper voice right here, right now. But he gets a skull on this turn. And luckily, does not burn us once again. So that's going to come into uh, into play. I'm going to swap out into Zapdos. I know that he's waking up on this turn. There's no way he's not going for Scald to knock us out. He knows that Hyper Voice doesn't take him out from this range. So he goes for Scald. We're going to get burned. Now, this is huge because now Zapdos is um, uh, longitude, l longitude? Uh, longevity is uh, pretty much neutered. I get a Volt Switch crit right here. So that makes up for the burn a little bit. Uh, it is 30% versus 6.25, but... Here, I'm just going to go into uh, Klefki because uh, I don't want him resting up, for one. He's going to go for a Rapid Spin. I expect the rest here. Like, my Zapdos is burned. I don't know why he wouldn't rest, so I, I'm just going to heal block him. I'm going to prevent him from uh, resting up once again. Uh, we are going to stop that dead in its tracks. And he Rapid Spins again, expecting a Spike. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I have no reason to go for a Spike at this point because his Blastoise pretty much dies to anything that I send in. And his Garchomp is taking Life Orb damage anyway. So that really doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to go for a Dazzling Gleam here and he, as he Rapid Spins again. So we're going to knock out his uh, Blastoise. That crit didn't matter. It was knocking him out regardless. He didn't have Special Defense investment. And we're actually going to live on two. And if I didn't say this before, this game is full of crucial moments. And Klefki living on two right here is one of those crucial moments. He's going to go in a Garchomp. Now, I know that this thing is just going to Iron Head. It has no reason not to. He's just going to attack me. He's not going to do anything else. He's not going to set up rocks. He he hasn't shown rocks yet. He pr would have probably gone for them a lot earlier. Uh, he's probably just going to attack me, knock me out with an iron head. So, I take this as an opportunity. And I am I know that like in four or, five, four or five turns from now, if I have this thing toxic, it is going to come down to a 50-50. This game is coming down to a 50-50 no matter what. Because Zapdos is now burned. So it can't take Draco into Draco. And I have to knock this thing out somehow. And if he brings in Reuniclus as I HP Ice, I lose the game. The game is over. This Garchomp is faster than my Gardevoir. I just straight up lose. So I go for the Toxic here. And he's going to go for an Iron Head. Now, he's going to take Life Orb damage as well as Toxic damage. So here I decide. He's at 40%. If I go into Zapdos and I click HP Ice as he switches out into Reuniclus, that's bad because he gets up a Calm Mind or he's able to knock out my Gardevoir with a Psy Shock. But, if I go for Volt Switch as he Draco Meteors, then I cover all options. Because this Garchomp is going to weaken itself to the point where it will die to the next round of Toxic. So I should be okay, right? Uh, and here I'm going to make my best play. If he knocks me out, Gardevoir wins. If he switches out, I'm at, health, at a good enough health to be able to take his Draco Meteor potentially. So I'm going to Roost, right? Just going to Roost on up. And we're going to go up to uh, 61 after the leftovers. We should fall to about 55%. This is a very long battle, by the way, guys. As you can see, we're on turn 43. And now I'm going to Volt Switch out as my opponent decides to recover. However, luckily, we've been calcing the whole game. And Tweety has been doing pretty consistent damage to this Reuniclus every time it Volt Switches out on it or Hidden Power Ices it. And I know that even if he recovers... He has to attack right here. If he doesn't attack, he gives me a chance at winning. If he recovers, Gardevoir's Hyper Voice knocks him out 100% of the time. So, I'm going to go into Gardevoir, and of course, my opponent is going to recover. So, now, this is where it comes down to that 50-50 that I was talking about. I'm going to Hyper Voice, 
Gonna knock out the Reuniclus. It's gone. Finally. Good. Get rid of this thing. I'm tired of it. He goes into Garchomp, and guys, this is the 50-50 that I was talking about. He is at 18%. He takes Toxic plus Life Orb when he attacks. If he goes for Draco Meteor right here and I stay in, he loses. If he goes for Iron Head and I switch into Zapdos, he loses. So it really is a 50-50 situation. Now, Draco still has a chance to not knock out my Zapdos. I need a very, very low roll uh, for Draco plus Burn not to take me out. But it is still a possibility. So, his only real play is to hope that I stay in, but I don't. I switch out into Zapdos, and my opponent is going to Draco... No, he's not. He's going to Iron Head our Zapdos, and he is going to take Life Orb plus Toxic, leaving him at 2%. And that is going to be our first win in the GPC. We are going to take it, but wait, we're not done. Hold on. I have to conserve Differential. <laughs> I'm gonna switch out on this Garchomp back into my Gardevoir to make sure he doesn't get another kill on me. He goes for Draco Meteor. We are immune. Mega Gardevoir 4chan coming through. And we are uh, winner of uh, week four of uh, the GPC. So very good game. Great game to my opponent. Please, guys, I have to ask him for his channel, but I'm going to be linking his channel in the description down below. Go watch his side. I'm sure it's going to be amazing commentary. You guys are really going to get a good perspective of why he switched out Reuniclus on those turns. So please, please, please do that. Uh, I'm going to be linking channels of every single opponent that I have uh, this season. And yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Your, your Montreal Hapsols are now 3-1 and one with what I, what I believe is a plus 6 record, potentially. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I think it was plus 2, plus 2, plus 2... Or plus two, plus four, plus two, and minus two. So that should put us at plus six. Anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, once again, please leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe, check out my Twitter and my Facebook pages. Both are in the description down below. And I will see you guys probably tomorrow, but for the GPC next week. Catch you later.